Hey guys, welcome back. So this afternoon, it just got done thundering, it sprinkled a little bit, and I think I've got a pretty good inside job instead of working outside in the rain this afternoon. The garage door guys, they are supposed to show up tomorrow, and they're gonna mount all three of our garage doors, and they're gonna get automatic garage door openers, and I have never had automatic garage doors before, so this is gonna be something new for me. So before those guys showed up tomorrow, I was, I was really wanting to have the power up here in the ceiling for those three garage doors. So I'm gonna make an assumption, and, and this is an assumption, I'm gonna assume that those garage door openers to power up that they plug into an outlet. So that's an assumption, hopefully I'm right. If not, we'll have to come back and directly wire them. So what I wanna do today to be ready for the garage door guys is I wanna run a circuit up here and I'm gonna put an outlet behind all three of these garage doors up in the ceiling so they have power to power up those garage doors. And then I'll probably put an outlet on the wall over here so that they can plug in some tools or I can plug into some tools because the only thing I've done so far is just power that box up. Um, I don't have any circuits hooked up in it yet. So these will be the first circuits that we hook up today. And if we have time, if we have time, I may do some more additional electric and start running some more stuff. But the first thing I wanna do is get ready for the garage door guys. So what I have brought in all these containers here behind me, this is all leftover material from past projects, from wiring the barn, from wiring our house and other things that I've done throughout the years. So I've got a bunch of electrical material here. I've got wire, I've got outlet boxes, outlets. I've got, I think I have plenty of extra stuff here to get started. So that's what we're gonna use today. So let's start rifling through this stuff, see if we can find some wire and get these outlets put in. This here should be some 12 gauge. You can't put wire in a box without it getting tangled up together. box and broke it. I'm gonna have to change this one back out. Take two. Be a little more gentler. See what we got for outlets. Pretty sure I don't need a USB charger on the ceiling. One, two. Three. So let me show you the style of outlets I like. They cost a little bit more, but they have a clamp. This is actually a clamp. So the wire fits in behind there and it clamps down with the screw and I make my splice for my hot and my neutral uh, on the outlet so then the only wire nut I have is this grounding wire nut back here where it splices the grounds together and I just think um, it's just a lot easier to work with. So we've got all three outlets installed. You can see I've got an extra wire here that I can move it around a little bit if I need to, but uh, now it's time to go ahead and hook it up in the breaker box. So the garage door guys have showed up and you can see they've got the garage doors all mounted. I think they look pretty good. I like those black garage doors on the barn. So I did talk to them on the phone and uh, the door they're 100 percent done the doors are mounted the garage door openers are on and working everything's complete 
And now the outlets that I put on the ceiling, I was guessing where they should go. Well, ended up, they ended up being, I guess, just like a foot or so from being able to reach. Uh, so they ended up pulling my outlets off uh, to stretch them out so they could at least plug in the garage doors uh, to test them out and make sure they work. So I'm going to have to move the outlets. And then in the time being, I've also had time to finish the electrical on the pole barn. Um, I, had to, I was able to finish the grounding for the electrical box in the pole barn. So I've got all that complete so I can go over what we've done there as well. But uh, let's check out the garage doors and uh, see how they work. So you can see each one of these garage doors has a pad on the outside to be able to open it up. So they said on the phone that the code was one, two, three, four. I'll make sure I change that code. I'm not going to leave it that way. <laughs> oh, yeah. Seems to be nice and smooth. So I will say there's birds flying around in the barn. Um, the doors have been off long enough that uh, birds have decided that this is their new home. And uh, at least we got doors on here. Hopefully we can chase these birds out get the doors shut and won't have them in here no more, but I can still see there's some in here flying around. So it looks like they mounted the inside buttons next to the side door over here. And then um, I guess these are the remotes that go in your vehicle. Looks like it has three buttons for three garage doors. So uh, that's nice to be able to open any of the doors from your vehicle. LiftMaster. I don't know if I've heard of this brand before, LiftMaster. It says download the app, close from anywhere. So apparently you can, uh, apparently I guess you can download an app and put it on your Wi-Fi or something and control it with your phone, I guess. Let's go ahead and open the other doors up. Seems to work pretty good. It says it has a light. Doesn't look like the light works. There's a light switch on there, turn on the light. So there's the garage door opener mounted on the ceiling. And I mounted, they're 12 foot garage doors, that's how tall they are. So I mounted my outlets over there on the rafter that's 12 feet from the wall. And apparently I should have mounted it 16 feet from the wall because they had to pull, you can see they pulled the outlet off to stretch it out, to plug it in. So I can't leave it like that by no means. So I'm gonna to have to move the outlets back over here to where the, they're on the same rafter or the same truss, roof truss, as the garage door opener's on. So one other thing they did do is they did put the weather stripping around the garage door. So this rubber seal uh, presses against the garage door when it's shut, helps keep out the drafts and cold air from coming in. I didn't know whether they would put this on, to be honest with you. Um, and I was happy to come here and have to see that completely on. The garage doors all work. So pretty happy with the overall um, job. Everything looks good, operates fine. The only thing that I can't test is the lights. There's supposed to be lights in those garage door openers and they didn't put the light bulbs in them. So I can't really test the lights to make sure the lights work. And the cool thing is, that it, and maybe most, I'd have never had a garage door opener before, so maybe this is normal, but um, there is a light switch over there on the wall for them on their on their openers on the wall so you can turn them on and off and use them as garage door or garage lights and um, since I don't have any lights mounted in here yet it'll be nice to get those working so that I can at least light it up if I need to. So let's take a quick look at the breaker box in here. I was able to get this uh, completed the other day. I got all the grounding and everything done. So when I ran the wires in here the other day uh, I didn't have everything I needed to be able to properly ground everything and, and to do the grounding installation. So I had to go out and buy a few things to be able to, to do this properly. Now I will say, a little disclosure, I am not an electrician. Um, now I've worked, I work with lots of electricians and um, I've done electrical work uh, in industry uh, for 23 years, but I am technically not an electrician. So to try to explain the, the, the reasoning behind the way I did this, let me, the breaker box over at the meter, the first uh, breaker box from the electric company, at that location, your ground and your neutral are actually bonded together. And uh, every place past that 
the neutral and ground should be separated. So this is actually a sub panel off of the main panel that's on the pole. So the ground and neutral need to be separated in this location. So the way this breaker box was put together, all three of these bars are all neutral bars. They're, none of these are a ground bar, they're all neutral bars. And this is designed to be that first panel off of the pole, okay, where they would be bonded together. So if you wanna separate them in this panel, what you gotta do is you gotta add ground bars. So I ended up adding a ground bar on this side. I added a ground bar on this side as well. You can add a third ground bar. There's a place that's already factory drilled and tapped up here for a third one up there. So what I did is I've, I've got the ground wire from the other panel. It comes in, it hits this ground bar. I went ahead and put a bonding jumper between these two ground bars just for good measure. And then from this ground bar down, it goes to a ground rod that is just outside the building and driven below the top of the ground. It'll be hidden under the ground. So, that, so there's a ground bar here and it's tied back to the ground at the pole. So everything is complete here now. Everything should be right. I have the neutral marked with white phase tape to mark it as a neutral. And then the ground is, is marked with green tape to, to identify it as the ground. So um, yeah, everything's complete. So now when I wire this box up, all my ground wires will hit one of these sidebars. All of your white neutrals will hit one of these three bars. And of course your positives will hit the breaker. So down there in that hole, just a few inches off the building, you can see we've got a ground rod, eight foot ground rod driven completely down below the top of the dirt. It's probably six inches or more below the dirt. And then our ground wire is attached to it. And uh, so that's gonna properly make sure we're grounded at this end of the panel. So like I said, I'm not an electrician. I do have an electronics degree. I've been doing electrical work on the on industrial maintenance side of things for 23 years. So as far as I know, the, my, the best of my knowledge, I think I have everything right. I want it to be right. And I, I think I've got everything right here. And uh, I think we're ready to start putting in uh, some outlets and lights and start getting this place wired up. So let's get back to the garage doors. They are 10 foot wide. They are 12 foot tall. Each one has a garage door opener and they don't have any windows. I opted not to go with the windows. I think it was gonna be like 300 extra dollars for windows. We opted to go without the windows and we used the $300 for something else that hasn't showed up yet, still waiting on it. Um, so there's still another feature to the pole barn that's gonna get added. So um, we'll keep that one as a surprise, I guess. So the total price of the, of the garage door installation for doors, openers, and installation, $6,300. So that ended up being $2,100 per garage door and opener to be installed. So um, just keeping you guys updated on what everything's costing. Um, I did get a bill for the backfill, part of the backfill, 19 loads, which we know it's gonna be closer to 30. So 19 loads of pit run to backfill this pole barn was four thousand dollars and so i guess at my best estimate if we're closer to 30 loads it's going to end up being closer to six thousand dollars for the backfill when it's all done and that hurts i mean i'll be honest with you that hurts um, you never could get an estimate for what the true backfill is going to cost um, you know you can get you can get estimates and hard bids on the pole barn garage doors and all that stuff but uh the the uh the backfill that was kind of a wild card nobody really knew exactly how much backfill that was going to take and um yeah i think my worst estimate was seventy five hundred dollars for the backfill um so six thousand would be a little bit under that so we'll have to wait and see how it turns out but hopefully it's a little bit wet less than my worst case scenario and then i, I don't know if i've mentioned this on another video we do have an estimate for gutters the gutters are supposed to cost us sixteen hundred dollars for the gutters. So it's supposed to have a gutter down this side, down the other side, and down the, the, the far side over there. It'll be on three sides of the pole barn. And then we'll probably take the runoff and, and, and put it over toward the pond. Um, so that's where we are with this. Um, and then the garage pad here in front of the pole barn, this, this area here in front of the pole barn, now that I've got my electrical ran, I've went ahead and I've contacted the concrete guys and I've told them you know, hey, whenever you're free, come back and pour this apron in front of the garage. So I'm just waiting for those guys to show back up. That was gonna be, I think around $3,700 to 
to pour the concrete here. And I think that pretty much sums up all the costs for the pole barn or what we're expecting to pay for the pole barn. Um, and with the increase in construction prices, everything, the, the building cost, I think this whole thing costs 20 or 30% more. I can't remember, 20% more or 30% more. And um, I think I'm pretty much spent on this, you know, I'm done. Uh, so I think we'll do the gutters, we'll do the concrete pad in the front. And then after that, I think it's gonna slow down. And then, cause I'm pretty much spent the money that I've saved to build this pole barn. So um, it'll just kind of be build as we go after this, you know, whatever free money we can find, uh, we'll just go ahead and, and do something and additionally put in outlets and lights. And it'll go a little slower after this, just because the costs were so much higher than we originally estimated a year ago. But uh, that's where we are with the whole pole barn build. Um, everything's coming along. Um, probably one of the next things I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually start moving in. I think I'm gonna start moving my tools and everything in here before they pour this concrete, because if they pour this concrete, I won't be able to drive on it for probably a few weeks. Probably don't wanna drive on it for a few weeks. So I think I'll be moving in here pretty soon to the pole barn, start trying to get some of my tools that I have in storage, out of storage, and, and bring those in here and start filling this thing up a little bit and get it to where I can use it. But uh, I think that's it for today's video, guys. I think I've talked on and on for too long already. So I uh, hope you guys have a great day. I'll see you in the next one.